Hello, this is Mr. White and this video is on calculating a viewing angle and also finding a maximum viewing angle. If you don't know what that means, stay tuned. We are going to be discussing the kinds of uh, monitors, the big jumbo screens that you see at baseball stadiums and such. So let's get down to business. All right, and our first example is going to be about Zephyr Field, our own New Orleans Zephyr Field. Well, technically in Metairie, but close enough. You get the idea. Uh, let's focus our attention to this jumbo screen out in the outfield. And let's think of where the best place to be, the be best place to stand on that field would be, such that you can get the, the best viewing angle of, of that screen. So let me give you a sense of what I'm talking about. Let's say you're standing right out there in the outfield. Here's you, you're looking well. You're right out there in the outfield and you're right underneath that screen. Well, clearly if you're right underneath the screen, you're not going to be able to read what is on the screen, right? So obviously you want to move back and you would get what's called a better viewing angle. I'll give a better definition of what exactly this viewing angle is in a moment, but hopefully you get a sense of what we're going for here. You're moving back, you're getting a better view of the screen, you're able to read it now. Well, so you want to read it even better. You keep moving back, right? You keep moving back further and further and further. And hopefully your, your own life experience tells you that at some point, it won't be optimal anymore. That viewing angle won't be optimal. At some point, you're moving so far back that the letters are going to seem really small and it's going to be really hard to get a good view of what's on that screen. So somewhere between the extremes, between being too close right underneath the screen and between being too far, um, somewhere there's some ideal optimal point where you can get the best view of that screen possible. I will comment that in, uh, in calculus, there's a topic called optimization, which we w in which we really delve into this topic on a deeper level, and we do so without a calculator. But for, day, for today, we'll just kind of get our grasp on how to set up this problem, and we'll allow ourselves the use of a calculator. All right, so let's get that out of the way, and let's get down to what our exact problem is. Let's say that uh, you're at Zephyr Field, and at the bottom of a 40-foot replay screen, uh, at Zephyr Field. Um, let's say that the bottom of that screen is 15 feet above your eyeballs as you stand on the field. So as we discussed, as you move away from the wall, the angle formed by the screen at your eyeball changes. And we want to know at what distance from the wall, at what distance from the screen really, is that angle the greatest. So let's draw ourselves a diagram that, that resembles this situation or that, that represents this situation. Or actually, before, um, before we draw a diagram, let me give you one more um, representation. Let me bring GeoGebra, a GeoGebra model up here that, that represents that situation. So here you see somebody standing, looking at a screen, and the viewing I, angle I was talking about is represented there. Right now, with the current numbers, it's, uh, our viewing angle is 37.3 degrees. So you can see that the viewing angle is the angle between the rays from the eyeball, the, the viewer's eyeball, to the top of the screen, and then you draw a ray from the eyeball to the bottom of the screen, and the angle between those two rays is our viewing angle. Okay, so uh, let's see, what were we dealing with? Uh, oh, and let me also point out that, again, if you're really, really close, you don't have a viewing angle at all. As you get further away, now the viewing angle's 41 degrees, it got bigger, now it's 37 degrees, it got smaller, and as you get further away, it keeps getting smaller. But let's enter in our actual numbers here. So let's go back. We have a 40-foot replay screen, 15 feet above the eyeballs, right? So let me enter that in. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Let me make the, the, the screen 40 feet tall and uh, 15 feet above the eyeballs. There we go. And well, let's go ahead and use this, uh, this model to get an idea of what our optimal distance is. And then we'll do some actual math to figure out more precisely what it is. So, Zero feet away from the wall, no good. 10 feet away, our viewing angle we see is about 23 degrees. 20 feet away, okay, it got bigger, that's better. 33 degrees, roughly. 34.82 degrees. Okay, now it's going back down. So at least between these five or, or 10 foot jumps that I'm taking, it looks like I've already reached my optimal point. It looks like amongst those jumps, it looks like around 30 feet or so is where I want to be, and I should expect this is getting close to as big an angle as I'm going to get. Okay? Well, let's find out more precisely using, using math and trigonometry what that viewing angle is and what that optimal distance is. All right, so I'm going to draw a picture that looks very similar to what we just saw in the GeoGebra model. 
Um, I'm not going to worry too much about getting the scale right. I really just want to get the concept right. So let's say here's a screen. Um, let's say here's some vertical distance, and I'll draw a line here, and here are some eyeballs. I'm, I didn't, I'm not really worried about how tall the person is, that the, this question was phrased in such a way that it's not really relevant. So <clears throat> let's put the, um, again, viewing angle is established by the ray from the top of the screen to the eyeball, and then the ray from the bottom of the screen to the eyeball. And this angle here is our viewing angle. Let's call it theta, why not? And let's put some numbers on there, of course. Our screen was 40 feet tall, so um, 40 feet. It's 15 feet above the eyeballs, so I'll put 15 feet right there. And again, not too concerned about this distance right here, the eyeball height, so we won't worry about that. All right, now, since we're concerned with that angle theta, we're immediately presented with a bit of a, a, a problem, at least at this point in our trigonometry careers. Um, notice that the angle that theta is embedded inside, or the triangle that theta is embedded inside, is not a right triangle. And at this point in trigonometry, we don't really know how to deal with non-right triangles. We only have, have been working on right triangles, either on or off the, the xy coordinate plane. At some point, we will find that we can get trig to work with non-right triangles. But for right now, we only know how to work with right triangles. So here's how we're going to get around that problem. We're going to recognize that even though that triangle I just drew was not a right triangle, we do have some right triangles on the screen here. Um, we should recognize that this is a right triangle, right? That's a right triangle. And we should also recognize that that is a right triangle, OK? So oh, that was a horrible triangle. Let me try that again. Yeah, that's better, right? Those are both right triangles, right? So with reference to those two right triangles, let's put a couple more uh, angles on there. Let's say that this angle theta for that, for that smaller right triangle, let's call that theta subscript 1. Theta sub 1. And let's say that for that bigger right triangle, this bigger right triangle, let's say that its angle it's a cute angle there. Let's call that theta 2. And the angle that we are really interested in, theta, we should hopefully easily recognize is just the difference between the, the other two angles. We should recognize it's the bigger theta 2 minus that smaller theta 1. All right? Pause if you need to. Make sure that that's evident to you. OK, so there's something. Now what do we do? Well. Let's focus for a moment on um, that theta 2, the bigger of the, the angles. Since that's concerning a right triangle and we know how to deal with, with right triangles, let's focus on that one. Let's write a, a, a trig function about theta 2. Um, let's see, what are we concerned with? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Well, clearly from the perspective of the viewer, we are, we are diff interested in that, that opposite side. And what is it we're trying to find? We're trying to find the distance from the wall, the distance from the screen, really, that um, optimizes that angle, that maximizes that angle. So we are also con concerned with this, this distance from the wall. So we are interested in the opposite and the adjacent, right? Well, let's go ahead and label that uh, adjacent side. Um, what is its length? We don't know. That's what we're supposed to find. So let's give it a variable d. OK, variable d. And let's write our trig, um, our, our trig equation. Let's go ahead and say that what, what trig function includes uh, opposite and adjacent? That would be tangent. So tangent of theta subscript 2 is going to equal this total length of opposite side. And we see that that's going to be the 40 feet plus the 15 feet, right? So that's going to be 55 feet over adjacent, and that is what we have labeled as D, correct? I, I, I hope that uh, you're with me till now. All right, so here is where inverse trig is going to help us out. Remember, we weren't really concerned with theta sub 2 itself. We were concerned with, with theta, our viewing angle. And so our, our goal here is to express theta as a function of this distance D. We want to see how theta depends on D. So 
I want to get this theta 2 by itself so that I can then plug it in here and get theta in terms of b. If that didn't make complete sense, if you don't totally see where I'm going, hang with me. Um, let's see if it'll become clearer as I, as I move on. This is where inverse trig is going to help out. If I want to get this theta 2 by itself, I will use an inverse tan to cancel out this tan. Again, please don't make the classic mistake of thinking that we're going to divide by tan. I see students do that every year, like we're going to do that. And that, that makes no sense. That's ridiculous because this is not tangent times theta. It's tangent of theta. That's not multiplication, so we certainly cannot divide out tangent. All right, how do we cancel out that tangent? That's what inverse tangent does. So inverse tangent on the left side, inverse tangent of the right side, that is what is going to allow us to get theta 2 all by itself. So we'll now have theta 2 equals, now there is no canceling on the right side. That inverse tangent is stuck there inverse tangent of 55. And um, let's go ahead and put, you know what, I'm going to be lazy from now on. I'm going to say we're dealing completely in feet now. So I'm going to say it's understood that that 55 is 55 feet. All right, that's our theta 2. That's sort of the big step in this process. Pause if you need to. Make sure you agree with that. I'm going to go through the, the next step a little bit more quickly because it's very similar to this one. I'm going to say that rather than deal with that uh, bigger right triangle that we uh, just dealt with, we're now going to turn our attention to theta 1. And that was the smaller right triangle, right? So see if you can anticipate what I'm going to do here. See if you can anticipate what I'm going to say theta 1 is equal to. I'm going to, I'm going to skip that intermediate step, and I'm going to go right to the inverse trig step, and I hope it'll be evident to you that theta 1 is inverse tangent. Now this time, the opposite is 15 feet. So 15, and again, that's understood to be 15 feet. All our units are in feet. They're consistent here. Over the adjacent. Now notice the adjacent is still just D. So 15 over D. OK? Now we're getting somewhere. We have almost got, uh, got theta by itself. Here's how. We're going to say that theta equals, I'm looking back at this equation up here, theta 2 minus theta 1. Well, theta 2 is a quantity that we have already written in terms of b, right here, correct? So let's bring that over here. That's theta 2 minus theta 1. And again, we have theta 1 right here. So there, we've got our expression of theta as a function of d. As d changes, we can plug d into that equation and figure out what our new viewing angle is, theta, OK? That was the big step here. That's the step that it causes headaches for students year after year. I hope I've, I've explained it clearly. Um, now let's figure out what our maximum viewing angle is going to be. And again, in calculus, this is something you could do without a calculator in calculus. And that has some benefits that, that we would discuss at, at some other time. But let's go ahead and use our calculator for this one. Now, we don't really get our choice of variables to use in the calculator. We're pretty much stuck with x and y. So notice that this equation, which I'm wanting to graph, this is how I'm going to have to enter it into the calculator. All right, so I'll bring the calculator onto the screen. There's the equation. I've already entered it in. Um, you can't see the whole thing here. But if I go to the end of the line, you see there's the, the end of the uh, equation that I said I would enter. And when you graph that, you may first be a little disappointed or confused. When I graph it, this is what I get. And I go, wow, I don't even know what to do with that. Well, let's look at our window settings. I've just got it on the standard, the, the Zoom standard default window settings. And, and I need to think a little more intelligently of what my window settings ought to be. Remember, x really represents d in this problem, right? Let's go back here. Remember. Uh, where I had d in the equation, that's what I had to type in as x on the calculator. So if x really represents d, um, I'm not interested in negative distances from the screen. So let's make x min a 0. Now how far to the screen, from the screen do I imagine I'm going to be? I don't know. We're talking about a baseball field here. Um, let's just say 100 feet as an educated guess in this real world context. Um, you know, we may have to tweak it. We'll see. Now what does y represent in this problem? Remember, y 
is what really represents theta, and we should have our calculator in, in radian measure. I don't care what the book says. We should have it in radian measure. So we're not interested in negative angles, and one radian is about 57.3 degrees. That should be plenty. Um, let's make this one. Um, if you want to make a two, if you're not comfortable with one, fine, whatever. Now, that looks better. That looks better, and, and, and let's recall what this means, what this graph means. Let me um, drag this out here. And what this graph represents is the fact that when we are, remember, this is d, this is theta. If your distance is zero, if you're right under the uh, screen, your viewing angle is going to be zero. But as you back away, as the distance gets greater, the angle gets greater until you reach some optimal viewing angle. And if you keep backing up, that viewing angle starts to shrink again. So we want to find this point. Okay, so I'm going to quickly bring uh, the calculator on the screen and calculate that maximum. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because that's something that we should be very comfortable with by now. I'll go to number four, maximum. Left bound, I'm going to type in zero. Right bound, I'm going to type in that 100. Um, just span the full window there. And there is our maximum point. Looks like it is achieved when we're about 28.72 feet from the screen. Um, that's about what we, predict, we predicted in the GeoGebra model. And that angle is about 0.60824 radian. Let me drag that over here. Um, remember, a quick way to convert that to degrees, if you really feel you must. Um, let's go to quit. Let's type in the Y value. So I'm going to alpha, and it's a little bit off the screen, but if I type number one it's, uh, on, on the calculator, it's got a Y right above it. So I go to Y, that was alpha, and then one on the calculator. And if I hit enter, I see that same radian measure that I just calculated. And if we want to convert that to, uh, to degrees, I'll do times 180 divided by pi. And it turns out that's about 34.85 degrees. And again, that's consistent with what we saw in the GeoGebra model. All right? So we did the part on paper. That was the hard setup. We had a couple of things we had to make sure we tended to on the calculator. But it looks like our answer is that the, um, the maximum viewing angle, if you want to do it in degrees, I will admit that for sort of real worldish problems, you tend to use degrees, some, um, or the book will. And I'll admit that there are many times in real life where that's really more practical. 34.85 degrees, we'll say. Um, at a distance of, I think we're only asked for the distance, but I'm going ahead and giving the maximum angle anyway. Um, and that was this value, 28.72 feet. And again, in a real world problem, that may be excessive as far as sig figs go, but my rule of thumb, uh, you know what my rule of thumb is, so I'll say 28.72 feet. All right, I hope that was totally crystal clear. Let's see if you can uh, do something like that on your own. All right, you're at the Britannia Theater. Um, I was looking for some actual values. I, I just made up some numbers because I couldn't find them. So let's say at the Britannia Theater, the screen is 30 feet tall. Um, and when you are seated, the bottom of the screen is six feet above your eyeballs. At what horizontal distance from the screen should you sit in order to have the maximum viewing angle? And what is the maximum viewing angle? I'm going ahead and asking you for both the distance and the angle itself. Have at it. All right, let's go ahead and get on to the solution. Here's the picture. I'm not going to go over it in detail. I'll just uh, ask it. It's very consistent with what I did in the last example. There's the picture, the, the setup of the problem. There's our viewing angle, theta, um, as well as what we type into the calculator. And when you type that in, and I'm showing my window settings that I have there, we see that the maximum viewing angle is about 45.58 degree or 0.7956 radian, and that is achieved at 14.7 feet. Of course, if you had any trouble with this at all, come see me.